This is the strategic planning and procurement meeting kickoff video. In this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to run it, exactly what it's for, and hopefully end up in a spot where you can do it fairly seamlessly and enjoy the experience. So please stay with us. So first and foremost, I do wanna say you can do this as a preparation for the meeting or you can play the video in front of the group as a part of the kickoff. Either way, I'm fine, but here's what I wanna say. Please pause at the right moment to prepare if you need to so that this can be helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please text me at 1-602-571-8987 and I will help you as soon as I possibly can. We want you to be successful. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. The strategic planning and procurement meeting. This meeting is so that you can make sure that your overall strategic plan and schedule is up to date, accurate, and under your control. And second, the purpose is to make sure that all procurement of resources and especially materials are aligning to that strategic plan and that you have the fundamentals of what we need to be doing on the construction project so that your last planners can figure out the how. And so here's what I mean. The trade partners are gonna create a look ahead with your supers. Your supers and foremen are gonna create a weekly work plan that must be vertically aligned to the overall master schedule and to your procurement efforts for anything downstream to be successful. So this meeting is where we dig in and make sure that that's correct. So here are the requirements for the meeting. You'll need your TACT plan, your CPM schedule if that's a requirement, your TACT zone maps, your logistics drawings, and most especially your procurement log, unless it's already on the schedule. If you have that in a visual format, hopefully in your trailer with really nice visuals and screens, or print it out, either way, those are the basic requirements with the right people. In this meeting, you will want the project manager, the project superintendent, and the project engineers at a minimum. I would love for the other folks on the project site to attend. If the field engineers are too busy, so be it. But those are the key participants and those are the key deliverables at a minimum. So this is where the long-term planning takes place. This is where the strategy happens. And I want to say that the better you do this meeting and the better job you do, everything else will vertically align to it and be successful as well. So here's the agenda. You'll get into the meeting, you'll gather everyone, and you'll immediately start out with positive shout outs. I want you to do that with every meeting, regardless of who's there. What are some positive shout outs? Let's get one or two. And if you, as the meeting leader, have to do them every time, so be it, not a big deal. But start off the meeting in a positive way. Next. I want you to get that schedule out. And remember, I'm not talking about a 76 page schedule that no one can see. I'm talking about a summary schedule or preferably a tact plan on one single page. And what you'll do is you'll get that out in the open and you will dig into it and make sure that things are on the right track. And there's four key things that I want you to analyze as a part of your overall plan. So first, I want to say that ideally you have a tact plan. If you have a strategic planning and procurement meeting and you don't have a tact plan, and if you don't have a procurement log uh, that clearly identifies the different steps and stages of a single piece of procurement through the supply chain, then you're probably not gonna be able to have a good meeting. But if you are, you can identify and manage these four things. Number one, how well is your overall duration? Do you have uh, the correct duration in the first place? And once you have that and that's locked into a contract, are you maintaining it with the right buffers at the end of the schedule? Because a lot of times our fee loss comes from estimating bus or what's called schedule creep, which we'll talk about in a minute. So uh, first and foremost, you will want to make sure that your budget is on track by making sure that you are maintaining your overall duration, okay? Number two, you will want to prevent 
production loss. And this format is perfect for that because as you know, tax plans have time on the top and location on the left and each one of these crews can be seen in the diagonal. Now, if you see a line that's a little bit less inclined, you know that you're losing production and they're not meeting their targets. If you see that that line is getting a little bit more vertical without burdening the trade partners, you know that you're either on track or gaining. And so the second key consideration for any overall strategy is to make sure that you're not suffering from production loss. And you can see that in the overall plan. Number three, you will want to make sure that you eliminate or reduce at a minimum rework. Now here's how you do that from a strategic planning and procurement standpoint. If you have an activity, you'll want to see on your schedule what's called a planning buffer or a planning trigger that tells you, hey, I need right there to have my pre-construction meeting and even before that, my pre-mobilization meeting. So in your schedule, these things will be scheduled and if you follow those meetings and prepare for that work, you will reduce rework on your project. Number four, I want you to manage what's called schedule creep. And what you're going to be looking for is to make sure that this, these activities are not drifting too far over towards your substantial completion or your final completion targets. And this is crucial for us to understand. In order for us to know that we're not suffering from schedule creep, we're going to want to analyze what I call the path of critical flow. So every phase has a connection to the other phases, correct? And every phase has a sequence duration, a line of balance, and hopefully at the end, a buffer. Sequence duration, a line of balance, and a buffer. And so what you'll want to do is trace from your start date to your tie, to your sequence, to your line of balance, to your buffer, your tie, your sequence, line of balance, buffer, your tie, and your buffer all the way to the end. And you'll want to make sure that you have a couple key things. Number one, you'll want to make sure that you have the right ties. Number two, you'll want to check the sequences in each phase. Number three, you'll want to check your line of balance. And we cover this in other videos, so please like and subscribe to this channel. You'll also want to go through and make sure that you have the right buffers. At the end of this schedule, you should have buffers. And if you are eating those buffers faster than you need, meaning faster than the rate that you're completing your project, you know you have a problem. So, You'll want to make sure that you have maintain your budget with your duration, that you prevent production loss, that you minimize or reduce or eliminate rework, and that you look for schedule creep and you manage your buffers. Once you do that, the absolute second thing that you do is if you have any activity on this schedule, you'll want to make sure that that procurement of materials has that target date plus a buffer plus all of the durations along the supply chain and that it's on track. If it's not on track, there are 15 different things you can do to get it back on track and I cover that in other videos. So the bottom line is you will want to make sure that you are reviewing the schedule and the procurement log and making strategic decisions to keep that project on track. The bottom line is you should leave with an updated deliverable with the tax plan, the zone maps, and your procurement log. Everything else from there can be figured out with your last planners. But this is the what. They can't figure out how to meet these milestones until you figured out what milestone we need to meet. So this is very, very important. This meeting is absolutely crucial. And I will list in the description below some key questions that you can ask. Uh, the outline of the meeting itself and the agenda so that you can be successful. But if you didn't remember anything else I said, I want you to review your plan and make sure it's correct. I want you to review your material procurement management systems and make sure that they're on track and have this visual and clear so that all other meetings are enabled and they can be successful. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you need any help, please let me know. Please like and subscribe so you can get the other videos. And I do want to say, good luck. You can do this. On we go.